Listen, we know this is not OSHA approved. Okay, it's officially demo day. We're gonna get this thing gutted. Um, I know last time we recorded, we uh, had done, done a layout in here, but I think we have completely changed our minds. So, um, but first thing we have to do is we have to get it gutted anyway. So we're gonna do that today. See how far we get. Most important thing, don't forget, is that we uh, we chopped the back end. We're actually sitting on a hill here in our driveway, but we made sure that the camper was level, side to side and, and front to back, because that way when we go to hang stuff inside, if you want stuff to be level, you gotta make sure your trailer's level first, or otherwise everything's gonna look crooked. So we got the trailer leveled up, we got it stabilized in the back end here. Like I said, we're uphill, so I have it chalked so it can't roll forward, but it's not going to roll forward on the hill. We're going to go inside. I think the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, pull the tape off and then kind of start start over with that. And then we'll take start taking the walls off. Okay. We're going to leave the window tape on. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to write A on this side and B on this side. That way when we pull these panels off, we know what side the panels came off of. Um, just so that way everything lines up, pile the screw holes that are screwed through the uh, frame, because we don't want to make any more screw holes than we have to into the frame. So the boards themselves, this Luan stuff here, or Luan, however the correct term is for it, is uh, put in with staples. So we're gonna have to get a crowbar, and just carefully pry try them out. I want to try to hang on to that stuff because I was watching one video and they actually use this stuff which is actually pretty flexible that to kind of put it up here so that way when you put the ceiling in you kind of have more uh, wood to screw into. Uh, so we're going to try that. The screws are, looks like these ones are Phillips head and some of the some of these end ones here might be um, like a T25 or T20 or one of one of those uh, star heads, so to speak. So we'll start taking the screws off, take the walls off, and uh, oh, there is a light over here that we're gonna have to take off. I don't know, I think we're gonna try to leave the light somehow. We might just have to relocate it because when we're hooked up, that light only works when you're hooked up to the, uh, the vehicle. It works off the vehicle's battery. So I think we're gonna put that maybe, maybe we'll put it up here above the door. That way if we're need to get in here at a gas station or something it's middle of the night we can just reach in turn the light on and go from there because i think the most of the lights that we're going to have in here are going to be battery powered we're not going to bother running cable or wire down through the ceiling or anything just because it's not worth it in my opinion but yeah let's get at it i got all the screws that i could see behind this trim i'm gonna guess there's a couple more because the walls are still pretty solid but here at the corners, uh, the two back corners here, and also the two front corners, they <laughs> scared the dog. They have uh, this aluminum sheeting, just kind of bent in there and held in place by some trim, just to kind of help protect the, the wiring that runs up and down for the, the lights and all that. We're gonna hang on to this. I'm not sure what we can use this for, but metal is always good to keep around. So we'll just keep going. And this right here is why you gotta get these walls off and get insulation behind it. Cause as you can see, they are built very fast, which means that the cuts are not perfect, which is why they put this trim on. Um, but you can see right through to the outside wall, which is what that gray is through there. So that's why you gotta take these walls off, get insulation in there, or you're putting heat or air conditioning in here is pointless. Sorry we've been, uh... MIA lately, <clears throat> we had a, well, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was gonna get my vacation approved for our trip. So we were kind of putting things on hold with the trailer renovations until we knew for sure. But I got my trip approved, so we're good to go. 
We're gonna put a few hours in tonight on the, the camper trailer. And uh, yeah, we got all the stuff delivered. We'll show you videos of all that stuff later. We got our air conditioner, our windows. Uh, we got our insulation going out at Lowe's. Paneling for the walls. Paneling for the walls. So yeah, now comes the fun part, <laughs> building it all. All right, all the plywood is out. As you can see, it's just bare wall. Looks like there might be a little water damage coming in from the outside, but nothing too serious. Probably just end up putting some ceiling up along that ridge there, and that should probably take care of some of that. Doesn't look like it's real bad. Uh, had to cut that wire there, because when they built it from the factory, they ran the wire through the plywood instead of cutting the slot in so you can just remove the plywood. But yeah. It's all ready for insulation. Probably the first thing we'll do is we'll sweep it out real good, get the vacuum in here, sweep everything out, got some spider webs. Get it swept, get it clean, get it prepped, and then uh, start putting insulation in. Jared really hates spiders, and Tilly really hates the vacuum, so this is just not a good mix. Okay. Sorry. So, we got the vacuum trailered out. The vacuum trailer. <laughs> trailer vacuumed out and take some uh spray foam here great stuff get it at lowe's hardware store we're gonna go spray the cracks if you follow me in here basically what i want to do is like right here it's got some big cracks in it so i'm going to fill this in just to kind of help seal some of that moisture and uh, debris and animals and junk from getting up inside the trailer this stuff is not much fun to use uh but once you get going with it you kind of have to use it or it's about shot so we're probably going to go through probably at least one can i would think um i'm going to do all these edges here where the plywood and the, and the wood meet to kind of help create a moisture barrier uh let's see what else yeah I think that's about it. Just pretty much anywhere where there could be uh, potential for water or animals to climb up through, we're going to try to seal up. Before we put the uh, insulation in, and while the spray foam is all curing, which could take a while, we decided to put some electrical boxes in. We decided to go with these, uh, well, we didn't decide to, we were kind of forced to go with these uh, shallow box, an eight inch bracket shallow box. They're only, you know, that wide. They're a little bit narrow or shallower than the standard, like ones you use in your home, but we only have an inch here to play with because we're not, we don't want to shrink our inside, we want to maximize on our width. So we got two here, 
Uh, we're gonna put a light switch in that corner. We're gonna put two more receptacles up there. These are only gonna be able to run off of our generator or shore power. We're not gonna do any 12 volt or anything like that at this point. You know, maybe down the road if we decide to go more boondocking stuff, maybe we will, but we have a generator, so it's either pay to charge the camper, or pay for batteries, or pay for fuel. So we're just choosing to pay for fuel right now. But uh, we're gonna run the wire. Just like anything else, it's trying to figure out where the best place to put it is because once it's in, you don't want to have to tear it out. Although in our case, we'll probably end up putting it in and then saying, no, we don't want it there. So we'll end up moving it like we always do. But uh, we're going to run it from here. We're going to put the breaker panel and all that stuff up in that far corner so it's out of the way but yet still accessible if something were to happen. So yeah, just run the wire now. So after much contemplating, one hole through the ceiling and much prayer and thought and recollection and reminiscing. Anyway, uh, had this accident. I ended up putting drill bit through the side of the trailer. Uh, it's not a huge deal. I guess we'll just put some epoxy on it, get uh, some waterproof like JB Weld or something from the outside inside. Uh, it's just one of those things that you hate doing when, when it happens, it's like, Anyway, our thought was to drill up through this bracket here so we could run this wire up through to keep it behind everything. But like, you, like I said, there I put a hole through the camper or through the trailer wall. So we scratched that idea for now. And we're just gonna run it up along this bracket here over down to the next box. Um, just because I don't wanna drill holes through all those, those uh, cross beams and stuff because that just, could take away from the structural integrity of the trailer. But yeah, so we're just roughing some of these wires in. I think I have, you know, copper links on them. I don't know, somebody out there in, in YouTube world, I'm sure will tell me if they're not long enough or something. <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. Um, don't have a lot of room in these shallow boxes, so we'll make it work. But yeah, I'm gonna run the wire, we'll go from there. Well, temperature definitely changed. It went from being uh, almost 90 degrees a few days ago to not even hitting, hi Tilly, not even hitting 60 today. But we gotta get this trailer done. So we're out here brave in the cold. I don't think it's cold at all, but Katie's freezing like normal. Tonight we're gonna focus on getting the, I think some insulation panels in the trailer. We gotta shave off some of the uh, spray foam around the bottom first. I have a scraper for that. And then we're gonna try to work on the nose first because it's got some corners in it and stuff. We're gonna see how we can make the foam board fit. So, should be fun. So one of the things when you're doing these builds that you want to be careful of is, you know, you're trying to save money. The whole, it's the whole point of building these things. So I know I started over there with the insulation, but now I'm jumping across here to work on this side because that piece there is almost the perfect size to fit in here. Um, trying to, the less amount of waste material you have, the, the better because then we may be able to return a sheet or two back to Lowe's or whatever. So yeah, just always keep in mind when you're working, don't just, you know, cut and worry about the waste later. You got to always keep that in the back of your mind. The less waste you have as you're going, 
the better. Listen, we know this is not OSHA approved, but we have remodeled many rooms in our house and aside from a few scrapes and cuts and little things, neither of us have ever ended up in the hospital, so we're okay. Safety first! <laughs> it's all good. Well, we got a lot accomplished last night. We got, say, what, three quarters of the trailer um, insulated, except uh, for the roof. Maybe half. Maybe half. Um, so we're just going to keep at it tonight. Um, I am sick, <laughs> so I'm really not in the mood to do this, but we really have to get it done. So um, we're just going to keep, keep working at it. Yes, we are. We're almost done with the installation. We're about, I'd say 90%. We just have to do the roof. When I realized we never ran the wire for the air conditioner. The whole point of insulating the camper to try to keep it cool and keep it heated. Uh, and I didn't even run the wire for it. So we're switching gears a little bit now. I have the wire. I think I already took it out to the camper. Or, oh, it's right here. So for the air conditioner, I'm using I'm not sure the size of this. I know this is, whatever this is, it's rated for 30 amp um, service. It's got red, black, and ground. And then you also have to run a wire for the thermostat, which is this little thing here. So this is the thermostat that will actually mount to the wall somewhere uh, in the trailer. I'm not sure where that location is just yet. We got to figure that out. So there's that. And this is the control module for the air conditioner. The part that goes in the ceiling. Um, this will actually sit in the air conditioner. This is what runs it. So yeah, just got to find out all, find all the wiring, find out every, where everything's at and get it, get it all run. Well, that was trip number two to Lowe's so far, which we're not doing too bad. Uh, normally by this time we do a project, we've been to Lowe's at least four or five times. So I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, the reason we had to run to Lowe's is because I realized I did not have any thermostat wire for the air conditioner to run from the air conditioner control unit and the ceiling down into the wall for the control module. <clears throat> so we got the 50 foot, that's just without buying it by the foot and I just didn't feel like doing that. Uh, got 50 foot of thermostat cable here. So we're gonna run that. That's gonna come from the ceiling down to this, this wall over here. <clears throat> and then the other wire we got is gonna run down over there to run power to the air conditioner unit. So there we go again. He's working on that. I'm gonna finish taping all the seams on the nose of the trailer. Um, he was working on that earlier, so I couldn't really be in there. Uh, but now that he's out of the way, I can get that taped up. So, just a friendly reminder. When you do something like this, make sure you run your wiring before you put the insulation and don't forget. Otherwise, you're left with a big mess. You know what we could call it? The Wander Wagon. I wanted to call it the Wandering Wagon. <laughs> he wanted to call it the Wandering Turtle. The Wandering Turtle. Chili's Wandering Wagon. The Wander, the Wander Wagon. It should have a big speaker on it that's just blasting. Well, I'll wander, fair Miranda.
trip number three to Lowe's. We uh, bought <clears throat> a 50 foot spool of thermostat wire uh, because Jared didn't feel like having someone come help us. And we really you know only needed like. like 10 feet of it. So we returned yeah. it and got <clears throat> 10 feet of it. 10 feet of it. Um, so we're gonna get this thermostat and everything installed tonight and do the insulation in the ceiling. That's, that's the, the goal thing. anyway. That's we'll cool. see how far we get. Yeah. I'm working on here is before we put any insulation in the ceiling I got a frame out around where the air conditioner is going to go so I took a two by four and ripped it down to an inch wide because don't don't judge the how I cut it because it's just going to go up in the ceiling but um basically there's only I only need 14 inch opening but the air conditioner itself is about a hundred pounds or so. So I'm going to frame this out to kind of beef up the, the roof a little bit, only in the area where the air conditioner is going to be sitting. So I'm going to square off an edge, run a line, cut it at the length, put it in, probably going to have to drill holes through the, uh, um, the studs, the aluminum studs in the trailer to run enough screws through to screw into this. But yeah, that's what I'm working on now.